So interesting uh, discussions about essentially female. Okay, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> but uh, as you will see, uh, um, there were definitely men <laughs> who were wanting also a more gentle statecraft. Uh, I'll show you concrete examples that I learned about from Warner's archives. So this is the sort of one of the objectives of the International Council of Women. Okay. So to Warner, what's he doing all this time? <laughs> okay. He's a young man. Um, so this is on your uh, handout. This sort of timeline should be at the end of the piece of paper. So this all this is happening in 1888. Okay. So he's basically going to college at University of Michigan. Okay. He's a young man. Uh, and then uh, he becomes a principal at Battle Creek High School. And then he becomes a principal at East Saginaw High School. And then he becomes a superintendent. And he does this for a number of years. Uh, he does a lot when he's a superintendent of Saginaw schools. And then he becomes the president of Central State Normal, which used to be a teacher's college. And it's really this time period that I'm going to be focused on uh, in terms of these worldwide events okay, affecting his destiny. It really starts to happen around this time. This, this year, 1899, is a kind of magical year, as you'll see. Okay. So why? Uh, so this is a picture of the 1899 Hague Peace Conference. Uh, I think it's the most important international event that nobody knows about. Um, <coughs> when you think of sort of failed international organizations, you probably think of the League of Nations, the Permanent Court of International Justice, which was its court, the League of Nations. Um, and now we have the United Nations. But before all of that, uh, in 1899, one of the things that happened was the first international court was created. And that court still exists. Um, when you think of the League of Nations and the United Nations, those international organizations were responses to world wars. World War I created the League of Nations. World War II created the United Nations. They were reactions to world wars. However, at this time, uh, this peace conference was not a response to a, a war. It was a proactive. It was let us try to come up with another procedure, another international mechanism to resolve our disputes. And that was the Permanent Court of Arbitration. This was huge in the United States, that people saw this was happening that actually like the international community was coming together to actually create a mechanism to replace armed conflict with something more humane. People in the United States were like, wow, okay. <laughs> um, you'll see, Warner was like, wow, and he was really involved in it, okay. So one question is, why don't we know about it? And we'll get to that at the end. Um, <coughs> so this is the event, uh, this is a big event that is going to influence uh, both Maywright Seawall and E.C. Warner. Big story, big story. And <clears throat> that's the Peace Palace again. So just realize this is 1899, okay? And the Peace Palace, as I mentioned, opens up in 1913. So, and it's Andrew Carnegie, who also is affected personally by that big event in 1899. Andrew Carnegie gives the money to build the Peace Palace. Uh, so, and there we are being influenced 115 years later in front of the Peace Palace, okay? So it's still having effects on personal lives. Uh, and these are some CMU students that it has affected. And so, as luck would have it, we happen to have Maywright Seawall's scrapbook from 1899. Okay, that's the magical year. So what is in here that is of relevance? Uh, first of all, this is um, Randy going into the, in the front, looking at some of the archives. Uh, 
and um, this was about a year ago actually that we were doing this. Uh, another uh, person is uh, Andy Blom also. So we're being affected uh, by her scrapbook in the present. And so you can see here what some of the contents looks like. And um, that card may look familiar because that's one of the you know, sort of gifts for today. And that card that you have is a recreation of this thing that we found in the scrapbook. Don't, don't read it now. There's a lot of text on it. Read it later. But uh, just so you know where it's coming from. And it <coughs> there's been some modifications to it to bring it up to speed with Warner and Seawall, but that's where we're getting it from. So what else is in here? Uh, if you look at this, this is a program, and it is from 1907. So the scrapbook doesn't just contain things from 1899, okay? And in fact, this is from 1897, okay? So this is 1907. And why this is so interesting is because it's at this meeting, this is the National Arbitration and Peace Congress in New York, where the American School Peace League is born. The American School Peace League is going to really touch E.C. Warner's life. So it's at this event where this idea is proposed. So what happens? In 1910, E.C. Warner establishes the Michigan branch of the American School Peace League, and he is superintendent. He's not, he's not the president of Central Normal at that time. Uh, there is a yearbook from the American School Peace League, and you may be asking, what is that? What is the American School Peace League? Uh, there's his name. Uh, E.C. Warner, you can see he is there as well as Gron, and Gron was the president of Central State Normal when the Michigan branch of the American School Peace League was organized. Basically every state in the United States had one, every state pretty much. It was a national network of teachers, superintendents, and students who were committed to the values of the 1899 Hague Peace Conference and teaching about the importance of that. Uh, so one of the things that they did was um, celebrate May 18th, it says, Suggestions for the Observance of Peace Day. And this, I don't know if you can see this, but this says United States Bureau of Education. So this is the federal government actually publishing curricula of, of the United States, publishing curricula on peace and the Hague Peace Conference. So there it is, Washington Government Printing Office, 1913. Okay, so this is before World War I. This is extremely important what happens to this. Um, so Peace Day was celebrated um, and May 18th because that was the day that the 1899 Hague Peace Conference opened. So the idea was if we sort of celebrate that, that is an opportunity for people to learn about what is the 1899 Hague Peace Conference. Today, with the International Criminal Court, we have International Justice Day, which is like July 17th, I think, okay? So there are all of these days, and the purpose of these days is to remind people, they're teachable moments, to remind people about what this thing is, what it's doing, and so this was done for the Hague Peace Conference on May 18th. So this is from uh, Warner's archives. This is Letterhead, Michigan branch of the American School Peace League. The date is May 6, 1912. And he's writing to the superintendents and principals, I am writing at the present time to request you to observe in your schools May 18th as Peace Day, this being the anniversary of the first Hague Peace Conference in 1899. There's actually many letters like this in his archives. Um, this was a kind of formal education, right? So insofar as schools are celebrating Peace Day, that's in a formal sort of setting. But Peace Day was not only celebrated or recognized in formal school settings. Um, <coughs> actually, this is so fascinating. This is May 18th, 1915. 
peace day a proclamation by the governor and this is actually in michigan and that's governor ferris and actually the american school peace league had asked its chapter members to petition the governors to do this and so e c warner i don't have concrete evidence but i'm pretty sure that e c warner is the one who caught they were friends and there's letters between e c warner and ferris in the archives contacted governor ferris and said can you please proclaim may eighteenth is peace day and by this time world war one has begun this is nineteen fifteen okay what's even more interesting is uh, the Department of Philosophy and Religion was involved in uh, uh, some commemorative activities when the Peace Palace turned 100. And as part of those activities, the governor of Ohio declared August 28th as the anniversary of the Peace Palace, which it is. And at that time, the governor of Ohio was John Kasich, who is one of the Republican candidates for president. So there it is. Okay, it's, it's a nice connection. Um, <coughs> So there it is. And so this informal celebrating of Peace Day um, by the governor of Michigan, at least, but also the International Council of Women celebrated Peace Day. Uh, and they did that by using the flags that you see. Uh, the, these flags were not only used by the International Council of Women, they were used by other peace organizations like the Universal Peace Union, uh, but they did celebrate Peace Day, absolutely. Uh, so there it is, there's the, the flag. Uh, so again, this is informal, irregular education. So this is a yearbook. I actually have the hard copy if you want to look at it. And at this time, now we're in 1919, 1920. And so by this time, Warner is the president of um, Central. So president, State Normal School, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And he is a vice president of the American School Peace League. Um, and then May Wright Seawall is also in there, and she's listed as a counselor. I don't know if they ever actually spoke to each other, but they're both brought into the same movement and the same organization. Uh, also, uh, <coughs> William Howard Taft, who came up the last time uh, we spoke about Warner and the peace movement. William Howard Taft is the only president to have visited CMU. Um, and absolutely, Warner had something to do with that. And uh, William Howard Taft, you see, is the honorary president of the American School Peace League. So this is what it looks like uh, if you go into the Clark. And uh, <coughs> this is a sort of file folder. And you can see there's correspondence piece, 1911, 1916, 1919. But behind that is also suffrage. So 1913, I think it says to 1919. And this is another worldwide event that affects Warner, okay? So it's not just the peace movement, it's also the women's suffrage movement. So there's also materials in the Clark about that, and that's really fascinating. Um, <coughs> and suffrage was a global movement. When we learn about it in this country, we tend, like our sort of understanding is only through the United States. But it was a worldwide movement of women. Okay? And actually, New Zealand was the first country to give women the right to vote. Okay? The United States was not the first. Uh, so these women were organized, actually, not only around that issue, but also around peace. Um, and both of them are affecting Warner. So again, this quote, the influence of worldwide events and movements upon the personal destinies of men and women. This was another worldwide event. You have the 1899 Hague Peace Conference, and then you have this international suffrage women's movement. 